Good morning, YouTubes. Today, I want to make a meat hook. I want a nice, believable, maniac-wielding meat hook. I have looked around the YouTubes, and there's not too many tutorials on how to make one. So I got to thinking, how can I make a good meat hook that's believable and that will last and hold up? So today, we're going to make a meat hook using automotive fuel line. It's 3 8 thick. You can get it at the parts store. You can order it by the foot. They'll cut it off for you at the store. And we need some handle material. So I've gathered up some materials. Let's get started. All right, now we're in business. I love old garden tools. The handles are gray, uh, old shovels, old rakes, uh, wheelbarrow handles. They're a gold mine. The wood's already gray and old and nasty, and we can make it older. So I'm going to find a nice suction chunk of wood. I'm going to need about my hand's width, plus an inch on either side. We'll cut us a handle out of one of these uh, pieces, and then we'll get started. Okay, so I got me a handle cut. I got a nice fat suction, feels good in my hand. I went ahead and drilled a little 3 16 pilot hole all the way through to the other side. That was my center point. Um, next I'm gonna use is a carriage bolt. I think this is 5 16 you can get it at any hardware store. It's got a little square part at the top. That's gonna be the bottom of the handle. I'm gonna cut this down. I'm gonna take this little stainless steel cap off. I'm gonna grind the edge it and screw and beat this up and screw it up a little bit. I'm gonna drill a hole, cut the bolt off. I'm gonna press this in. That way we got a, a, a bottom of the handle that looks believable. So um, the other problem is we've got brand new cut wood. This is kind of a grade handle and we're gonna deal with that. Um, I got a special mix we're gonna use and we'll get that working right before we drill. So I'm gonna go ahead and get this bottom handle piece cut and then I'll show you what my plan is. Okay, I took the carriage bolt and cut it down with the hacksaw. It's really short now. I got the little square edge right there. I ground the stainless steel cap off and put a little edge on it. Now my plan is to go ahead and press this into the uh, bottom of the handle. I'll put this on a bench vise and smash it in. You could also beat it in with a hammer. It'd look just as cool. But I'm gonna put some E6000 glue in there. I'm gonna get this guy in there and then we'll come back and we'll take care of that brand new look wood on the handle. Okay, that worked out pretty good. I went ahead and pressed this in with the bench vise. You can beat it with a hammer. It's glued in, that way it won't come out. It looks like our, uh, our meat hook actual metal part will be all the way through. We still got our little pilot hole all the way through. And now's the time where you can go ahead and distress the handle as much as you want. You can use any array of tools, nicks, files, hammers. You wanna beat up the edges a little bit. You wanna drop it on the ground. You wanna rub it on the concrete. It depends on how far you wanna take it and how beat up you wanna use and how beat up you wanna go. It's kind of your own preference. Uh, my only thing is splinters. So usually after I'm done distressing something, I'm gonna be holding my hand or somebody's gonna hold. I like to just take a piece of 80 grit and sand off any possible splinters just in case down the road. And you can beat your wood up as much as you want. It don't matter. You can even go over the metal piece, the little carriage bolt we used. And that's pretty cool. Feels good in my hand. I like it. Let's go ahead and take care of this uh, new wood part. So for the new wood, you could easily use a gray wash with acrylic paint, or you could just stick it outside and hang it on a tree or a fence if you wanted to for a couple of months. The wood will eventually turn gray. But uh, I like to use a little formula I made up that I can speed things up. So I'll take it over to the table and I'll show you guys. All right, I go ahead and mix a jar with some quadruple zero stainless steel, or not stainless steel, steel wool. And that's my formula right there. If you guys wanna freeze the screen, that's what's in the little jar. Um, the longer this stuff sits, the better. It'll break down that uh, steel wool eventually and it'll uh, become like a orangey yellow liquid. So for the most part, we can just take our new metal and stick it right in there and be sloppy. We ain't gotta be pretty. You can do this in multiple stages. You can let it dry. I'm gonna damn hurry because I freaking hate waiting. But uh, 
This will turn the wood gray faster. The vinegar and the stuff uh, reacts with the wood. It'll darken up that blonde end so you don't see it. You could dip it in there 5, 10, 15 times, as much as you want. You let the wood sit in there. Uh, it's just a fast way to make the wood turn gray. So by the time this thing's uh, close to getting done, it'll match a little bit. It won't look like a fresh cut piece of wood. So we'll let that sit, and then we'll go ahead and let's start working on the, uh, on the blade for this thing. Alrighty, so I went ahead and drilled a three inch hole in the top of the handle so it'll accept the uh, fuel line when we make it. The bottom's uh, already done basically. That'll be our finished product on the bottom. Just in a little bit of time that uh, I've been working on the, the fuel line, the top's already starting to darken and turn gray, so that's pretty cool. We'll put that aside and let that dry. As I said earlier, I wanted something lightweight that would look good. Um, would last and hold up. I didn't want to use foam. I didn't want to use um, plastic hangers. Um, so at the auto parts store, they sell three inch fuel line. It's hollow. You can buy it by the foot, buy as much as a little as you want. And I'm going to cut a piece of this to be our main hook for the meat hook. So we can just bend this stuff by hand. It's pretty pliable. You just kind of pick how drastic or how much you want to use or what you want your shape to be. See, it bends pretty easy. You can straighten it out. You can go as crazy as you want. So I'm going to go ahead and bend up a piece off camera, get the hook I want, and then uh, we'll come back and get some attaching points on that thing. Okay, I got my meat hook all cut. I'm pretty happy with it. I just bent it against the wall. I cut the end down, sanded off the little burr so I wouldn't stab myself. It fits in the handle pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that. It's a nice beefy meat hook. So, how do you attach it? You got a couple thoughts. Um, you could easily take a screw, run it in your pilot hole. Get in there. Cut the top of the screw off with the saw. Then glue and slide your hook right down on top of it and call it done. But for me, since I'm here at the shop, I think I'm going to go ahead and weld up my end, although you could easily put a dowel in there and caulk it closed, but that's a little too sharp. I don't want no kid getting a hold of this on Halloween and putting somebody's eye out. And uh, I think I'm gonna weld a little screw in the bottom of mine so I can screw it into my handle, but I'm gonna glue it as well. So I'm gonna take this thing, I'm gonna weld it up, and we're ready to attach this handle, or the blade, to the handle. Okay, people, I got the welder set up. I'm gonna go ahead and weld a screw I cut down into the bottom of the blade, and I'm gonna go ahead and close this up with a welder. Now I know you people are gonna say, oh, cobwebs, but I don't have a welder. You don't need one. You could easily screw a screw into the handle and epoxy this in and slide it down on there. And you could always put a wooden dowel in here and caulk it in or glue it in. Um, I just wanna build it to last. I'm gonna build it one time, one time only since I'm here at the shop. So I got the welder, I'm gonna go ahead and use it. So let's get our weld on. Go, we're grounded. Let's go. More gas. All right. Woo, she's good. Now let's fill in this tip. I'm gonna go ahead and stick a rod in the middle of this to help fill this hole, and then I'll be back. All right, I got a little bit of rod poked down on the tip. Let's go ahead and give her hell and finish this up.
and touch it with your bare hands. And if you are going to weld, always use gloves. And I have an auto darkening helmet, so I'm good. A little more. this cool. I'm going to run the grinder over it. I'm going to clean this up. I'm going to round that edge off because I don't want it being sharp and anybody's going to get stabbed their eye out. And uh, we'll put this thing in the handle. Okay, we're back at the table. We're all done welding up. I got the tip welded closed. I like that. It's nice and blunt. Nobody's going to get hurt. What you guys couldn't see on camera was that I welded a little screw. I cut the head off the screw and I welded that in the handle. So we're ready to put this thing together. I've got the handle and the time we've been working on the actual blade part, it's already starting to turn gray. I went ahead and drilled down a little bit, got some E6000 in the hole. We can start screwing this in. And then I wanna rust this blade and I'll show you how to do that as soon as we get this thing screwed in where we want it. So far, so good. Now that's a freaking meat hook right there. All right, go one more turn. Right there feels nice and tight. You can bend it a little bit if you want, tweak it around. That's perfect. Let me go ahead and wipe up this excess. And then we'll go ahead and rust this blade. All right, I'll just let the E6000 sit in there, let it dry. But I'm pretty happy with that. That feels nice and beefy. That's a good meat hook. That's something you chase college students around with. All right, I'm happy. Let's go ahead and grind on this blade and sand this blade. We wanna rough it up and get this coating off so that we can go ahead and rust it. I'll get my little grinder. All right, hit it in some spaces. Do as little or as much as you want. And again, does have to be all power tools. Good old 80 grit sandpaper. Put some nice scratches in. Sand that blade down some. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna scuff this down and then we'll do our rust next. Okay, we're good to go. We got our, the whole blade scratched up. I went ahead and sanded it with sandpaper and some files and a little mini grinder. So we're ready to rust this thing. It feels good, looks good, I'm happy with it. I'm gonna go ahead and spray it down with my own little concoction in a bottle. It's four parts hydrogen peroxide, one part distilled white vinegar, a tablespoon of salt, and just one squeeze of lemon juice. I put it all in a bottle and mixed it up. I'm gonna shake it up. I'm gonna hose this little hook down and we'll see how fast it turns rusty. Let me scoot the table back. Get everything in the spray bottle and we just hose it down. And again, you can do as much or as little as you want. It shouldn't take long. See the tips already turning orange. And you can do a couple of minutes in between sprays. You could do it overnight and come back the next day. I want an immediate result, so I'm just gonna hammer it down now. So I'm gonna let this sit for a second, then we'll come back and take a look at what it looks like. All righty, so it's been about 15 minutes or so. I've been kind of hosing this down with the, my little rust formula. And look at that, it's already starting to take. I mean, that already looks authentic, like it's been sitting in an old barn or an old field or an old slaughterhouse somewhere for a couple of years. I went ahead and rusted the little end, the little uh, uh, carriage bolt I stuck in there is a, fake, is a fake anchor point for the whole blade. Um, but I'm loving that, man. I mean, that's, it's lightweight. It's old gardening tools. It's a $2 piece of uh, fuel line and you got a believable meat hook. I mean, some Texas Chainsaw Massacre shit right there. I've got one last little trick I'd like to show you guys. Um, mine, I don't know if I'm going to clear coat. I think I'm going to let it get rustier before I clear coat it and lock all this rust down. Um, I'm going to hit it one more time with my little super solution. The longer you leave it on there and this is real rust. This isn't fake. This is real rust. You can clear coat it at any time you want to stop. That's your choice. 
But my last little secret weapon for these guys at the dollar store, paprika and cayenne pepper. This stuff immediately makes rust, uh, gives you the scale part if you want the really heavy rusted uh, effect. It's kind of up to you how far you want to go. So basically, we've got our meat hook. See, it already left a little rusty print. Got our meat hook kind of hosed down and wet. Come back with our little cayenne pepper. What's this one? Well, this is the paprika. A little paprika. Spray down there generously. Tap. Boom. Now it's really crusty and rusty. You can't beat that for $2 in paprika and ground pepper. You could do a lot of panels of those little bottles for a dollar a piece. So that's it, folks. That's my rusty meat hook. I hope you like it. Uh, if you want, you can throw some fake blood on there. You're ready to chase kids around for Halloween and keep them out of your damn yard. I hope you enjoy it. I hope you build one yourself. Hell, some of you picks on, uh, on uh, Facebook. But that's my rusty meat hook. Hope you guys enjoyed it. I will see you guys in the next one. Thanks so much for watching.